There are several tools for temperature measurement that can be used with induction heating. In preheat applications, a traditional temple stick can be used. This is a type of crayon used to mark the workpiece, which will melt when reaching temperature. However, this is a highly manual process and is subject to human error. Close monitoring of the melting crayon mark is required. Another method of temperature measurement when preheating is with the use of a contact probe. The probe is highly sensitive to placement, and therefore human error is again a risk factor. To ensure accuracy, the probe must be placed in the center of the heat zone, underneath the blanket, and it must be in direct contact with the workpiece. If the probe is not in direct contact with the metal, it will report a lower temperature than the true metal temperature, resulting in overheating and possible damage to both the probe and the blanket or cables. The probe should not be used above 600 degrees Fahrenheit. The probe is then plugged into a thermocouple extension cable, and in turn, the cable is plugged into the front of the ProHeat. The most accurate and reliable way to measure temperature in an induction heating process is by using welded thermocouples. Thermocouples used to measure and control temperature should always be placed in the center of the heating coil, underneath the blanket. Thermocouples used as monitors can only be placed next to the joint to verify desired temperatures, but they should not be used for the temperature control. Doing so will overheat the material in the heat zone. A Type K 20 gauge solid thermocouple wire consisting of two wires will be spot welded directly to the workpiece using a thermocouple attachment unit. The other end is fitted with a two pin Type K connector. Type K thermocouple wire has a positive and negative wire. The positive wire is marked as solid yellow or striped yellow. The connector screw terminals are marked positive and negative. Be sure to attach the wire to the connector with proper polarity. The two pin connector plugs into a three pin composite extension cable. The extension cable has a six channel block of three pin female connectors, numbered from one to six. The pin size determines its location in the three pin female connector. The extension cable contains six shielded cables. The shielded cable is used to protect the power source from electromagnetic interference. The three pin male extension cable plugs into the front of the ProHeat power source, which contains a three pin female connector. Now let's look at how to properly attach thermocouples to a pipe or workpiece. To attach thermocouples, use a portable thermocouple attachment unit. This unit will spot weld thermocouple wire directly to the workpiece to ensure accurate temperature measurements. It's important to attach thermocouples to a clean surface. Often, filing the surface or grinding must be performed. Then, strip a quarter inch of insulation from the thermocouple wires. Set the output variable control of the thermocouple attachment unit to about 80% of full scale. Put the yellow wire on first. Grab the end of the stripped wire with the tip of a pliers. The pliers hold the thermocouple wire securely in place for welding onto the metal. Be sure that the pliers are not touching the workpiece and that wires are not touching each other when the unit is energized. This would cause the thermocouple wire to fuse to the pliers rather than to the workpiece. When the unit is ready to weld, an indicator light will illuminate and a buzzing sound will also signal that the unit is ready. Be sure to use the welding glasses supplied with the unit. Simply press the discharge button and the thermocouple should now be welded into place. There will also be a sharp crack and a slight arc flash. Protective shaded eyewear should be worn during the procedure. One half of the thermocouple wire will now be welded into place. Repeat the process with the other half, placing the two wires side by side approximately a quarter of an inch to three-eighths inches apart from each other. Once securely in place, wires should be bent parallel to the workpiece, so as to lie flat against the metal. This will also test the weld. If the weld shows signs of breaking, simply remove the wire, re-strip the end, and repeat the spot welding process. After the thermocouple wires are welded to the workpiece, they may be taped to prevent movement. 
It is best to route the wires perpendicular to the direction that the coils will be wound. The thermocouples are then plugged into the thermocouple extension cable, and in turn the cable is plugged into the front of the proheat. Thermocouples must be identified and labeled to correspond with their locations on the pipe. This is sometimes documented in the post-weld heat treatment procedure. Using the ProHeat system, up to four control thermocouples can be used, as well as up to two monitoring thermocouples. Redundant thermocouples can also be used as backups. In cases where thermocouples break during the heating process, the redundant thermocouple can be plugged in without interrupting the heating process. The four control thermocouples will be read by the ProHeat's controller. When all four control thermocouples reach the desired temperature, the ProHeat automatically reduces the power so as to uniformly maintain desired temperatures. The monitoring thermocouples will be read and monitored by the ProHeat's controller, but not used as control thermocouples.